Hello and welcome to this film which is about acid-base titration calculations. Hopefully you've now watched all the films about the practical aspects of the acid bases course and you know how a titration is carried out. Something about indicator choices and things like this. Um, in this film we're just going to basically take some data from a titration and we're going to carry out a calculation using that data. All right, so here we go. Here is the question. Um, 9.32 grams of cloudy ammonia was dissolved in distilled water and made up to 250 mils in one of these volumetric flasks that we know all about now. Okay, and then 20 mil portions of this solution were titrated. So this presumably was the aliquot from our pipette. Okay, they were titrated with 0 0.980 mole per litre hydrochloric acid, which must have been in our burette. Okay, and we've used methyl orange indicator, which, as we should know, changes colour in the acid or the acidic range. The results obtained are shown in this table. Calculate the percentage by mass of ammonia in the cloudy ammonia. Right, now a good habit to be in is always to write a formula for the thing you're being asked to find. So let's do that. It's the percentage of ammonia. Well, that equals the mass of ammonia divided by the mass of the impure substance, which is the mass of the cloudy ammonia, which is going to be 9.32 grams. Okay? Do we know a formula for this? Yes, we do. The mass of ammonia is equal to the number of moles of it times its molar mass, which is 17.034. Okay? This number of moles, where are, we, where are these numbers of moles? Well, they're not in the 20 mil portions because we dissolved all of this stuff in 20 mils. So this is in 250 mils. Right? So the number of moles of ammonia that's in 250 mils, because we can't measure that number of moles because we haven't done a reaction with it, we're going to have to find it from this. And this is going to be, so this number of moles in 250 mils is going to be 12 and a half times as great as that. Okay, So it equals the number of moles of ammonia in 25 mils, sorry, 20 mils, multiplied by 12 and a half. Okay? What's the number of moles of ammonia in 20 mils? Well, I'm finding that out in 20 um, by reacting it with hydrochloric acid. So there's a reaction going on. It's between the H plus ions in the hydrochloric acid and the ammonia to make ammonium ions. Conjugate acid of ammonia. Okay? And we can see here that it's a one-to-one -one reaction. And because there's one H plus in every HCl, then I know that the number of moles of ammonia in 20 milliliters is equal to the number of moles of HCl that's in my average titer. Okay? And the number of moles of HCl is equal to the concentration times the volume. The volume being this average titer volume. Okay? So let's have a look at the titer volumes. This one's 27. Okay, this one's uh, 25.7, 25.70. Okay, this one is 23.75. This one is going to be 25.90. And this one's 25.80 running out of space there unfortunately okay so there's our tighter volumes now this rough one is included we normally wouldn't use the rough one but the reason for not using the rough one here is because it doesn't match the others to within 0.2 of a milliliter so I'm crossing that one out this one also seems to be a slightly anomalous result so I'm crossing that one out these all match to within 0.2 of a milliliter so I'm going to average these volumes and so the average titer is going to be uh, 25.80 milliliters. Okay, so now I can start plugging values into here. Well, I know my concentration. This is 0 0.980. So I'm going to multiply it by my average volume. That's 0 0.0258. And that equals, what does that equal? That equals 0 0.0253 moles. Oops, 0 0.0253 moles. Okay, so now my number of moles of ammonia is equal to that number of moles of HCl, which is 
which is 0 0.0253 moles. And we can read it that time because I haven't made a mess of it. But bear in mind, this is in 20 milliliters, okay? This is in these 20 milliliter aliquots. All right, so I'm going to have to multiply that by 12 and a half, and that equals 0.316 moles. And now I know this number of moles here. Multiply it by 17.034, and that equals 5.38 grams. Okay, so my percentage of ammonia is 5.38 over 9.32, and that equals 57.8%. Okay. So that's how we do the calculation. Let's just have a look at this thing here. We've used methyl orange indicator. All right. So what we're going to do now in this next slide is we're going to see how would the results have changed if we used a different indicator. Now remember, we had ammonia and we were adding hydrochloric acid to it. So we would have started at a kind of weak base type pH and we've, we'd have gone down to a strong acid. So we'd have been looking at this kind of pH curve, sorry, titration curve, right? Now remember, if we'd used phenolphthalein, phenolphthalein's endpoint, or the pH that it changes color at, is around about this range here, okay? It's about eight to 10, all right? So in other words, phenolphthalein would have changed color way before equivalence, right? So, I've used methyl orange because it changes color roughly in that vertical part of the graph. Okay, The end point of the indicator matches the pH at equivalence. Okay? Here's, so this is a good indicator to use. This is phenolphthalein, which isn't a good indicator to use. It would have changed color way too soon. In other words, I would have thought, judging by the color change, that I'd reached equivalence quite a long time before I actually had. So I'd have used less acid, so I'd have thought there was less ammonia in my 20 mils and less in the 250 mils, and so I would have got a lower percentage than the actual value. Okay, so knowing what these titration curves look like and what uh, the endpoints of indicators are is quite important if you're asked to explain the effect that using the wrong indicator would have on your calculation. Okay, So not just calculations in that film, but also some kind of qualitative statements about errors that could be made. All right. So if there's any questions, please feel free to comment on the YouTube or come and ask. But the most important thing with calculations, because we've only done one of them here, is to practice plenty of them until you really get good at them, Okay, so that you can be confident in the exam that you're going to get them right.